Now that we've got eight segments of cactus to play with, let's start introducing some of the growth logic that will make this cactus grow from, from nothing to a full-size cactus. So we're going to do that by adding a new input for the overall cactus called growth, which basically just represents how much time into the cactus growth has elapsed. I'm not making that, um, say, a, a driver based on the current frame of the animation or anything. Um, this gives you more freedom to control. Um, you know, how quickly uh, the growth occurs, or even if you want the growth to go in reverse. So we're going to have a growth input, uh, which is just going to be a number, starts at zero, works its way up to some maximum growth value. Uh, and each segment is going to be assigned a unique ID value. So we're going to assign the bottom segment an ID of zero, the next segment is one, and then two, and then three, and then four and segment zero won't appear until growth has reached or exceeded zero. Segment one won't appear until growth has reached or exceeded a value of one, etc. So that way the segments appear as the cactus grows from the bottom to the top. So let's get back to our geometry nodes setup and let's provide that growth input for the overall cactus. So let's pull up the panel on the side, scroll down to the bottom of the inputs because I'm adding a new input at the bottom and it can be a floating point value and we'll call it growth. Now let's go into our one segment geometry node setup and let's create a new input here as well and it's also just going to be growth and in fact we're going to plumb growth all the way through the cactus so let's add it as an output as well and in fact let's do the wiring for that really quick since uh, this is not a value that we're going to change between segments, we can just plumb it all the way across to the next segment. Okay, so now let's add the more interesting one. So in the inputs, let's add a new value, also a floating point value. Let's just call it ID. And we're going to add an output, which is the ID for the next segment of the cactus. And that is also a floating point value. Uh, let's call it next ID and the next ID will just be the current ID plus one so this will be an easy thing to wire up so let's plumb it all the way through add a math node with the add function I'm going to add a value of one I'm actually going to rename the node to plus one collapse it and then let's make the next value equal, uh, sorry, the next ID equal the current ID plus one, like this. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're only going to add the new geometry that we compute up here at the top if the current growth value is greater than the ID value of the current segment. So let's do that that bit of logic right up here and that logic requires the growth value of the cactus and the ID value of the segment um, and as usual I'm going to label these bring in a compare node this is a node that will let us compare two floating point values and return a boolean which is a true or false value which we're going to need to decide whether or not we keep the geometry that we're computing here. So by default, it's checking for greater than relationship. So we're going to say if growth is greater than the current ID value, then we want to keep the geometry. Otherwise, we'll just discard it. And the way that we keep or discard a chunk of geometry is using a node called switch. So, you take the Boolean result of the comparison operation, plug it in to the pink socket on the switch node, and then we plug in the geometry that we want in the case when the relationship is false, here, or no geometry, and the case when the relationship is true, here, which can also be no geometry. It's completely up to us. But in this case, <clears throat> what we want is if growth is greater than ID, 
So if the relationship is true, then we want this geometry that we've computed here. So let's bring that down, plug it into the true socket. And if it's false, we don't want any geometry. So we don't want to add this geometry at all. And so we'll just leave that unconnected. And that completes that wiring. And we have growth and next ID as outputs on our um, segment nodes, but we don't currently have it wired to transfer that data all the way through the chain of eight segments here. So that's the next step, is to just connect up the wiring. So we'll connect the input growth value to the first segment's growth value, and we'll set the first ID, so this is the, the very bottom base segment in the cactus, its ID can be zero. And then all the other IDs can be computed by our nodes. So we'll connect growth, we'll connect next ID, and we know that this will be an ID value of one. And here we'll connect growth, we'll connect the next ID, that'll be an ID value of two, and then we'll just connect the rest of them. And now if we go back to our layout view, we can see what happens when we play with the growth value of our cactus. We can see anywhere from zero segments to one, two, three, all the way up to the full set of eight. But we would prefer our cactus to have a sort of rounded cap on the bottom and a rounded cap on the top. So let's tackle that as the next job. In order to close up and round off the top of the cactus, what we're going to do is take the tapering that already exists thanks to our shrink factor, and we're going to add some additional shrinking um, to have it sort of very rapidly collapse um, to the point where the top opening is literally sealed shut. And we'll do that with a finite number of segments at the very top of the cactus. Um, so I'm going to go with five segments, but we can make that a parameter. If we go to our um, geometry nodes, pull up our panel for the cactus node, and we will add uh, one more input at the bottom. Let's make it of type uh, integer, and let's call it cap segs for short, meaning cap segments. This will tell us how many segments we will use to create the rounded cap at the end of a cactus. Let's return back to our layout view, and let's set cap, uh, cap segments to five. And let's come back to our geometry node setup, close the panel, and let's just work over to the side a little to create a new node. So let's begin by adding a couple of reroute points, connecting them. And now between them, let's for now just add two math nodes. And the only reason I'm doing that is so that we can highlight more than one node, right click, select group and begin working on a new node group. So we're now happy to kill those nodes. Let's space input and output apart so we have room to play. And let's add some inputs. So what do we need to know to compute the amount of extra shrinkage that's gonna round off the caps of our cactus? Well, one thing we wanna know is what is the what is the ID of the segment that we're in? And so I'm not going to call that ID. Uh, I'm actually going to call that the distance point, which is sort of like the distance from the very bottom of the cactus. So distance point, it's a floating point value. The second input is our growth value for the cactus. And then the last input will be the cap segments that we just added earlier. That's an integer, and let's call it cap segs. And then for the output, uh, we're just going to have this extra shrinkage. Uh, it is a floating point value, and let's just call it uh, cap shrink. Spelling that right. Cap shrink. Okay, close the panel, and let's create this node setup. So bring in a math node, use the subtract function. And what we're going to do is take the current growth value and subtract the cap segments. So growth value minus cap segments. 
this is where the beginning of the rounded cap begins. Next, let's add a map range node. And we'll plug the distance point in as the value for our map range node. The from min will be what comes out of our subtract node. And for our maximum, we will just take the growth value. Cool. We can leave two min and two max as zero and one. And the last thing we will add is a float curve node. And what we can do here is pull the left up to the top, pull the right down to the bottom, and plug in the output here into the value socket. And I'm going to leave this as this linear diagonal downward um, curve. But this is something that you can come back to and play with if you want to shape um, how rapidly the cap on your cactus uh, collapses. But from experience, I know that this, uh, this will look uh, the way that I like, so I'm not going to tweak it. Plug that in as the output. Let's come back out here and name this node cap adjustment. Next, we'll make use of this node uh, to create yet another node that will output the adjusted values of the segment length and the segment radius. So to be able to highlight two nodes, uh, let's just add a math node, highlight these two, right click and group again, get rid of the math node, create a bit of space, let's cut this link, leave this up here for now, and yeah, we're going to have a number of inputs in this node. So starting with the shrink factor, as a floating point value, the next will be that distance point, which again is sort of the distance from the bottom of the cactus, uh, the growth value, cap segments, which is an integer, cap segs for short, the length, which is a floating point value, that's the length of our segment. And then finally, the start radius of the segment. And for outputs, we will have two values, both floating point numbers. The first will be the adjusted length, which I'll just call ADJ length for short. And the second will be the um, adjusted end radius. So we close the panel and let's connect up our inputs and outputs. First, let's add a math node with the multiplication function. And let's multiply our shrink factor by our start radius. Next, let's add one to our distance point. The reason why we're doing this is we want to shrink the top radius of our segment, not our bottom radius. And so the distance from the bottom of the cactus is not the ID value of the current segment, but rather the ID value plus one. And so if we add one, and again, I'm going to rename this node to plus one. I just found it's a little clearer. And we'll connect up our distance point, which again is just another word for the ID of our segment. And remember that the IDs count from zero upwards from the bottom of the cactus. I'm just going to rearrange a tiny bit. Okay, let's add a reroute node just for the sake of giving this value a name. Let's call it end radius. And let's bring in our cap adjustment node. So the distance point that we will plug in is going to be our um, ID plus one. Our growth value is just the growth value that we have here. And same with cap segments. Let's 
give a name to the output from here. So again, another reroute node. And let's call this the end cap shrink. Now let's add two math nodes, both set to the multiply function. And plug end cap shrink into both. Let's use the top one to compute the resulting length. And use the bottom one to compute the resulting radius. And feed those through to our output. Let's get back out of this node to give it a name. Let's call it adjustments. Okay, let's delete the two reroute points. And let's just leave the node here for now. We will be coming back to it. But let's just quickly plumb cap segs through the entire cactus. So let's go inside one segment. And let's make sure it's an input. Remember that's an integer. Let's also make sure it's an output. And then let's just run it all the way through from left to right. Come back out and make sure the plumbing goes through the entire cactus. Let's go back inside the one segment node group and let's create another new node group. I'm just going to make a little bit of space here. Your layout will be different from mine, um, so you may or may not need to make space. But I will. So I want to select the two position vertex nodes, right click and make a new group out of those. Let's quickly come back out. Oops. Let's quickly come back out and give this group a name. Let's call it uh, segment positions. All right, once we're back inside, one of these is the position vertex node that gives us the starting position of a vertex, and the other is the one that gives us the end position of a vertex. So when you create a node group, group like this, Blender is not always the cleverest about looking at incoming versus outgoing um, links and looking for labels. Um, so for example, you'll see that we have two inputs named tilt axis, uh, two inputs named tilt, um, two inputs named radius scaling, even though outside the node they have different labels. So let's pull up our panel and let's get rid of one of those uh, tilt axis inputs since there's only one tilt axis, so we don't need two. And let's just plug that in. Great, so we're using one tilt axis input for both. Now for tilt, um, there are two different tilt values. There's one used for the start, one used for the end. So which is which? Well, they're the last two. So let's jump out and have a look at our node. And we can see that end tilt is coming in first and start tilt is coming in second. So that tells me that this is for the start value and this is for the end value. So I'm going to rename the bottom one start tilt and I'll rename this one end tilt. Next we have two that are called new center but we can see that this lower one here goes to this node group and therefore it's the start center. So let's rename it and let's rename the other one to end center. Cool. Now we have two radius scaling values. Uh, the second one goes to the start. So we'll just call that start radius. And yes, we'll call the other one end radius. And now we have two values for vertex position. And again, there really is only one vertex position input. We just have two copies of it. So let's pick the second one and delete it. And let's plug it in here. 
Now I want to reorder the inputs on this node. Starting with the vertex position, which is already first. After that, I want the tilt axis. And then the start center. Then the start radius. And then the start tilt. The end radius is next. Sorry, the end center is next. Followed by the end radius and the end tilt. Okay, this is the order that I want. And for the outputs, let's change the order of them so that we have the start first and the end second. And let's rename them start vertex position and end vertex position. And now let's clean up the wiring. All right, and let's clean up the wiring surrounding this new node. Remember that adjustments node that we created and then seemingly forgot about? Well, we didn't forget about it. It's down here. It's time to make use of that. So it's called adjustments. We can go ahead and delete it from here, get back into our one segment node setup, and then we can search for it and we should be able to find it. There it is. So let's start putting it to use. Notice that one of the things that it does is um, adjusts the length of uh, the length value for our segment and it adjusts the end radius value for our segment. So what I'm going to do is just slide these over. Again, your layout may be different from mine. You may not need to do that. And I'm going to bring this adjustments node over here so that we can begin plugging in the various inputs that it requires. So the first is the shrink factor. The second is the distance point. That's actually just the ID of our segment. The third is the growth value. Then cap segs, followed by length. And finally, start radius. All right, so the adjusted length is the new value of length for the current segment. And so what we can do is actually just replace length with this new value. Next is the adjusted end radius. So anywhere where we currently use end radius, we should replace it with this value. So end radius is computed here. <clears throat> so for now, what I will do is just grab this node, pull it over here, and swap out the value that it computes for end radius. And now start cleaning up with this node and working backwards. So hit X to delete it. And I can delete this. I can remove that. I haven't deleted it. I've simply removed it. And that's the extent of the cleanup uh, for that part of this. 
let's just clean up the wiring. So what has all this even done? Let's take a look. Let's jump back over to this window. And yeah, we can see um, the roundness of the top of the cactus. And it's not completely collapsed to a point at the top. And that's because uh, the growth value that I happen to be on at the moment is 8.97. So if you reduce that, you'll find that that opening it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And since we have eight segments, you'll actually find that it collapses somewhere close to a value of eight, like this. And uh, yeah, we're going to do something similar to the bottom of the cactus later. And we're going to do the same with um, both ends of all of the arms that eventually come off of this cactus.